So today I would like to show you truffles which will splice audio at different points and gives you access to various parameters of each splice. Truffles is a part of a commercial collection I worked on together with the developer of the Path Set Collections. It includes three modules, so there is truffles, there is also panther cap and hyphy, and there are also two free modules, so hyfa and truffel. You can explore both of them, experiment with them. Truffle is a slim version of truffles, so you can use it to see if truffles is something that you can enjoy. But let's get started and see how truffles work. So there are two ways you can use truffles. You can either record into it, so there is a stereo input, and a record button and CV input. By the way, if you record something and you want to save it, there's an option in the right-click menu that you can save your sample, right? Or you can also load samples. There is also a button here on the panel itself just to make it quicker because you can record and load samples into multiple slots up to 16 slots, right? So you just select the slot and you click load instead of going to the right click menu all the time, right? And then of course it has a CV input and dedicated uh, attenuverter. I already have a sample here loaded on slot number one. And the idea behind truffles is that the audio will not play back by itself, but you have to trigger the splices. So there is a trigger button and input right, that you can use. I have here a sort of a guitar, I guess. Right, and like this I can trigger the, the splices. Right, and for this example I will use an LFO, you can use any other source, any other trigger source. Right, now the splices can also play on top of each other. This can be interesting, we'll see this also later for polyphony. And this will be according to the rate of the trigger, right? So if I trigger this quicker, right, you see they're sort of playing on top of each other. And this will also be influenced by the fade control that will add cross fading between the splices, right? So they will really play on top of each other. Right, we can also change the splicing points with the uh, spread control, right? So now they are more or less evenly um, spliced, but you can change this. Right, you get different rhythms, different results. Right, of course, everything has a CV input and a dedicated attenuverter. Right, we can also change the way the splices are being triggered. So for now, uh, this is with the mode. For now, they will move from left to right. Right, we can change this from right to left. Or we have also ping pong. Right, so right to left and then left to right. Right, there is also a random mode. And there is also an addressable mode, right, that you can use something like a sequencer, for example, to sequence the splices. So the CV input now, even though it says trigger, now the CV input will change to continuous voltage. So here, for example, I have the ADDR sequencer. If I trigger or clock the ADDR with the LFO, I can now use it to sequence the splices. And now the fun starts with the different controls. Each splice has a sort of a channel strip, if you will, with the same controls. Right, so for example, I have here a drum sample that I can trigger. Right, and now first of all, I can change the speed or the playback speed and pitch of each splice. And you can see that the splices are also color coded, right? So you can see which one is for each um, color, is for each splice. Right, so for example, I can take the speed of um, splice three a bit down, it will play slower. Right, with a lower pitch. Right, also, let's say splice seven. Right, 
Right, by the way, the CV inputs here are also, um, will also follow volt per octave. So if you want to sequence various splices, this is also possible. Right, we can also set splices to play in reverse, for example. So let's have two and five. Right, we can also deactivate uh, the various splices. So if I deactivate splice eight, for example, now we get a totally different result because there are only seven splices. Right, of course, everything has a CV input when needed, also in a 10 verter. So you can also control this externally. Right, and there is also for each splice, there is also a gate output that will output a gate as long as the splice is playing. Right, so for example, I have here the FM operator. I will use the gate to gate or to trigger the sample and hold that will generate a different note and also to gate the FM operator. This is going through a delay with Prince of Perception. Right, so let's use, for example, gate number three. Right, so every time it's playing, Every time it's playing, the FM operator will also play. We'll change the notes. Right, I can also mix a few of the gates. You can use a regular mixer because they don't happen at the same time. So it's more of combining them. In this case, I'm using OR logic to combine different and uh, the different gates. Right, and the voice itself is kick all going through the tap dancer. So let's do, for example, one. And let's say four and six. Now each splice has also send and return that you can use in two different ways. So first of all, let's record something uh, into truffles. In this case, I have the FM operator, right, with some chorus. So let's record just a few notes. Right, so now we have this um, recording and I will trigger the splices with a random source. It has also some probability set to it, right? Just so it's not always triggering it. Right, and I will set this also to trigger them randomly. We'll add some cross fading. Right, so already we get some sort of polyphony. Right, let's uh, also change a few um, splices. So for example, splice three can play an octave down. If I just right click it and enter negative one, it will play an octave down. Let's have also uh, another splice playing an octave down. Maybe a couple will play in reverse and maybe another one will play an octave up. So just enter one. Right. Right, so we have a nice texture going on. Now we have again send and return per splice. So here I have the prism of perception module, um, which is in this case, we will use this as a delay. And let's say that I will send only one splice into it and then back. So only this specific splice will be processed by the delay. I will take the one that is set an octave up, right? The send will go to the delay and the return will come back from it. Right, and now only this splice, this one in this case, will go and will be processed by prism of perception. Right, and it will come back to truffles and will come out together with all the other splices from the main output, from the mix output.
Right, but there's another way to use the send and return, and that's by sending the splices to dedicated channels, processing chains, and so on. So for example, here I have a um, spork from PESSET, which is a granular processor, right, and I want to send another splice to it. So let's say, for example, the second splice, right, and I will only send it to spork, right, and this one, spork is going to a dedicated channel on the mixer, on the main mixer for various processing, so I don't want it to come out of the main output, of the mix output of truffles as well, I want it only to go to spork, even though I don't send Spork back into the return. Right, so this we have an option in the right click menu, there is exclude direct sends. If it's set to yes, it says it here. If yes, slices would send patched, but no return patched are excluded from the output mix. So if I send this to yes, everything that is only connected via the send and it's not returning, right, will not come out of the mix so you can send it to various processing dedicated channels on your mixers create a different mix bring it in and out and so on right so again just by um, recording a few individual notes from the fm operator we get this nice texture Right, I have here a few more voices, I have here a few drums that I'm sequencing with the gate sequencer from Impromptu. Right, and I have here a bass with a percussive vibration. And I have a few more uh, examples. So here I have a few samples loaded on different slots here on truffles. And you can see that I'm sequencing the slots. I'm also sequencing the splices themselves. And we get something. There's a bass, there are some drums. Right? And then I'm sending one splice to a delay and distortion. Right, and another splice uh, directly to the mixer to a lot and, uh, of a send reverb. Right, so we get this rhythm. Then I have here um, another truffles with more drums, again sequencing the splices. Right, some are playing slower, some are playing quicker, some are playing in reverse. All of this is going through a filter. Right, and I'm also sending one splice um, directly to a delay and another channel on the mixer. Right, and then just to add some stability to everything, I have some drums here sequenced again with the gate sequencer from Impromptu. 2. Right, and everything will sound like this. Right, everything is in sync because you trigger the splices externally, it can be in sync, it can be random as you wish. Right, and that was it, I hope you enjoy, uh, you will enjoy truffles and find a place for it in your patches. Again, there is also the uh, free version that you can explore, right, and see if truffles is something that is for you. And there are also the other modules in this collection. Um, thank you again, Pathfet, for working on this with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.